Hi everyone, my name is Matan Azanov and welcome to my channel. I've been in the venture capital game for a long time. In order to invest in one company successfully, that means I have to probably speak to several hundred. In order to speak to several hundred, I'm getting inbound emails and pitch decks and everything from about a couple of fabs. I want to tell you one cautionary tale, a story of a great, what I thought was an interesting entrepreneur that approached raising money from VCs in probably one of the dumbest ways I've seen. The business was good, the, per the entrepreneur seemed credible, but here was a mistake this person made. So I received this email. I'm not gonna get into too many details because I don't wanna hurt this guy's reputation too much. I wanna protect his privacy. This person wanted to raise a hundred million dollars. Sounds like a lot because it is a lot. Most startups will never raise that kind of money. Most startups don't need to raise that kind of money. When I asked this person, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. It's a very interesting concept. Cool. What is your current traction? Maybe this company is already doing a couple hundred million dollars in revenue and it's, you know, take, it's like a growth stage company and they just need to get to the next, this is the final last big round and then they're going to go do an IPO or sell to Google or something crazy like that. Nope. The product didn't even launch. So I asked them, well, how do you justify this kind of hundred million dollar round that you want to raise? And he said that, well, my projections for the first year after the deal closes is that we're gonna be doing 1.4 billion, with a B, dollars in revenue. Now, me, I'm completely shocked. This is, he's telling me this by email. I'm trying to figure out if I should meet with the guy. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, I've seen some crazy projections in startup land, and I've never seen anything that crazy, right? So I ask him rhetorically, has this kind of thing ever happened in human history, meaning from zero to plus the equivalent of $1.4 billion? And it was rhetorical because the answer is obviously no. And I'm trying to point out that this is a ridiculous thing to say and to do and to pitch to anyone. Obviously he responded, well, no, but here are all the reasons why I think we're gonna do it. It almost doesn't matter because to get that kind of revenue in one year, that means you have to, from the first day, start generating $4 million in revenue. Someone that's never run a business will think that that's probably possible if they put something into a financial model and you can kind of justify anything in a financial model because that's all it is, it's just a financial model, right? But someone who's run a business knows that that's, that's, that's crazy, that's fully crazy. That's never happened before, probably will never happen, on an inflation adjusted basis will never happen in human history. So why did this person do it and why am I telling you this story? So this person did because in some in some world this person believed that you need to give some crazy projections to VCs in order to justify your crazy valuation today. And that's true. In order to justify a crazy valuation today, you have to show that hey my business is going to be worth tens of billions of dollars in the near future. That's true. But it also has to be realistic. You can't just go out there and make some crazy projections and expect people to accept it and to think that that's, that's true or real or has any basis in reality. All you do is lose credibility very quickly. So what is the right thing to do in a situation like this? Let's say you actually believe you have a great growth story. Well, first you should get an advisor. Always before sending decks or pitches to a potential investor, just get it reviewed by someone that knows you, that likes you, that believes in you, that has some experience in the space. It could be a lawyer friend, it could be a VC friend, an entrepreneur that's raised money successfully, and just show them what you plan to pitch, and they will tell you right away, like, this is, this is crazy, man, don't do this. So you have to create projections that are ambitious because everybody wants to invest and they have to invest in ambitious entrepreneurs. That's the only way they're gonna make their money. But it has to be based on something real. There has to be a negative truth. There has to be some traction to justify traction in year zero or year minus one to year plus one. There has to be some reason to believe that this is going to happen, even if it's aggressive and ambitious. If you have zero revenues, which a lot of companies do before they raise money, that's fine, right? That makes your task a little bit harder because you have nothing to base that projection on. But that doesn't mean you should go to $1.4 billion in revenue in year one. That just means you have to show, hey, if we sell X amount of widgets, X amount of licenses or whatever in the first six months, that's what the kind of revenues will give us. In order to sell that amount of licenses or widgets or whatever, we have to hire one salesperson because the sales cycles are this many months and this is what we think are possible. And we have 
feedback from potential customers and we have these pilots going on and whatever, there has to be something real. And if there isn't anything real, you have to be upfront about that and say, well, listen, we don't know what's possible because we're the first ones doing it or this is a new product or we're entering the industry for the first time. And those could all be good reasons not to have a solid projection. But the thing you should absolutely not do if you're in that situation is create a projection that's so unrealistic that someone will look at you and think you're an incredulous person, that you're not the type of person we want to do business with. Because your goal is to get them interested, to spark that interest, so that they, they will spend more time and effort to learn about you and your company. Because you have to understand, someone that's investing in startups is inundated with opportunities. Now, not all those opportunities are good, but they're inundated. They have to figure out very quickly who to spend more time on. Is it going to be you or the other person in the same industry with the same product or a similar product or solving the same, tackling the same problem with a similar solution? They have to figure out who am I going to spend time on. And if you destroy your credibility by creating projections that are so unrealistic, they're not going to spend more time on you and they're going to go with the other entrepreneur. This is the cautionary tale. Don't go out to market with projections that are so unrealistic that you lose credibility because then that's a good reason for a VC to say no. And I know what I'm doing when I'm looking at pitch decks and when I'm reviewing emails and when I'm speaking to entrepreneurs is I'm looking for reasons to say no. Because if I can say no, that means I can shortcut my entire decision-making process and say, well, this is, not an, this is not an entrepreneur we can invest in and I go to the next. And the next, I do the same thing find the reasons to say no. And then if I can't find a reason to say no, then I keep going until I do. And then if I keep going and I can't find a reason to say no, well, hey, there you go, you make an investment. So let that be a cautionary tale for you. Don't come up with crazy projections. Get advice from a VC or a lawyer or a friend that's built a successful startup or that's raised money successfully from VCs. Make sure you get some good advice. Don't come to VCs and pitch them $1.4 billion in revenue in your first year. That's not going to be successful. People don't want to see that. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Happy hunting, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.